Hey there crew, it's Mark from Men Who Bullet. Thanks for coming to hang out with me today where we're going to be talking about migrating from one bullet journal into our next bullet journal. This could also work for planners as well, so it's kind of encompassing all of the things. In today's video, I'm gonna be sharing with you one of my favorite resources. It's one that I've used before, and you can actually download this, print it out, put it in your notebook, or create your own collection page. It's a want, needs, and then also kind of a taking with me and leaving behind worksheet that we can use. The links for that will be in the descriptions for you below. We're going to be working through this step by step today. This is something that I've used every single notebook probably for the past two or three years and I've really, really loved having this. It's really helped me think through things. Throughout the video today, I might be asking you just to press pause for a second because I'm gonna share with you kind of my thought process and how I use this worksheet, but I want you to take a moment and work through it yourself as we're going through this. I always like it when something is led, like a class or something like that, so let's treat this video like that today. So let's go ahead and first start with our wants. So wants are not necessarily deal breakers. These are more nice to haves. I like to start here because if you start with like, I have to have this or else, it might not put you in the right state of mind. So we're gonna talk about what we loved, what we liked about our previous journal or planner and what we wanna see in the future ones. For myself, I wanted easy look aheads. This doesn't necessarily mean it's a calendar page. It could be a future log. It might be something else, but with projects and things going on, I wanted a way to easily look at what's coming up in the near future, along with taking a look at what's happening in the immediate right now. And so I wanted to find ways that I could do that for myself. I also want at a glance dates. Again, this could be a monthly overview. This could be a different type of calendar page. I'm not exactly sure and I don't have to solve it now. These are just things that I want to have and just kind of mentally thinking about as I'm going into my next journal. I also wanna make sure that my pages don't ghost. It's a personal preference. I don't like when things bleed through pages or you can see a lot of the ink or whatever you're using on the other page as you're using it. Again, it's not a deal breaker for me, but it is something that I personally like to pay attention to and something that you may wanna think about as well. And the fourth thing that I'm working on is going to be a focused area for work. If you're like me, you may use your bullet journal for work and for home, or maybe you have them split out. However you wanna figure it out for yourself, you absolutely can. For me, it was important to have a focus area, so it's something that I really wanted to think about as well. So now this is the spot where I'll say for you, pause the video and just take a few minutes and jot down some ideas on things that you may want to have in your next journal. These don't have to be law, these don't have to be everything included, but just jot down some brainstorming ideas, and when you're ready, let's go ahead and get into the needs. The need section is 100% deal breakers. If I don't have these things, I will not be happy in my next notebook. First and foremost, I wanna make sure my paper can take on different type of inks. I love pens, it's one of my favorite things with bullet journaling that I've uncovered for myself. I like to use ink pens, gel pens, fountain pens, a lot of different type of pens, and I want to not have to worry about each one of those as I go through. As a way for me to get some of those wants, I wanna have calendar pages, whether I'm creating them myself, whether it's a monthly overview, or whether that's a planner that's gonna have all of those things for me, it's absolutely important that I have some way to jot down what's happening that month and ways for me to plan for the future as well. The next thing for me is having lots of space for notes. Whether I'm setting up weekly spreads or just general pages to think throughout ideas, it's really important for me to have paper, notebook, ways for me to get those things out. So regardless of what I'm using, I have to have that amount of space. So now it's your turn. Think about your absolute must haves for your next journal or planner. Go ahead and put this on pause, jot down those ideas, and then we'll get started next with the things that we absolutely don't want. Okay, we have our wants, we have our needs, and now it's time to talk about the things that we didn't like about our previous planner or the previous way that we've worked. This is a totally healthy thing to do because it really helps you kind of cross out the things that you wanna make sure you're not bringing with you, bad habits. It could be certain types of materials or features of a notebook or planner that you just really didn't love. and It'll be helpful for you to think about what's next. For myself, there were only two things that I knew that I absolutely did not want in my next planner or bullet journal. The first thing is I knew that I didn't wanna have a lot of different planners. I'm okay with one or two, but I don't want to necessarily have to have a notebook for ideas and a notebook for blogs and a notebook for work and a notebook for home. Where am I gonna keep all those notebooks? I don't carry a backpack or a purse or anything else with me, so I can't shove all of that into one thing. So I need to make sure that whatever I'm coming up with, I can do that with one or two notebooks at most. And that's what was important for me. 
The next is that whatever I'm using, I cannot work with discs and I cannot work with ring binders. I've just never had success with those in the past. I found some that I kind of liked, but it's still not quite working for me. So whatever I'm using next has to be bound in some way, likely as a notebook or maybe a different material that's not interrupting. I'm a lefty, so things get in my way all the time. So now it's your turn. Let's go ahead and think about the things you absolutely do not want to take along with you. Again, these could be features you don't want. These could be bad habits that you had in this previous journal. You can go ahead and pause now. And when we come back, we're going to talk about what's coming with us and what we're keeping behind as we're migrating from our one notebook into the next. The keep and leave is something that I like to do as I'm actually flipping through my bullet journal. So if you have this pasted inside of your journal, just mark your page so you can easily get back to it. Or if you're just working on this worksheet as we're going through, just have it off to the side with a pen. What I want you to do is just take a few minutes and go ahead and page through your bullet journal or your planner. Start at the very beginning and just take notice to what you really liked, what made you smile, what made you happy, and what made you a little bit more upset or where you're like, oh, that really didn't work out for me. So here are some examples of the things as I flip through my journal that I know that I absolutely need to take with me into my next one. The first thing is I'm definitely taking my YouTube and my Instagram trackers. I love the way these look. I love how they worked out. Not all of the pieces necessarily worked, but I love tracking through the analytics. It's so much fun. So it definitely has to come along with me. Because of my job, I'm also on the line with Help Desk a lot, and I actually created a collection page this year that has been super helpful for me. So I definitely wanna make sure that this is coming with. I run a program at work for Lunch and Learn, which is a great place for me to keep all of my notes and all of my ideas. I wanna do a better job this year than I did this past year with this note section. So taking that along with me to make sure that I follow through all my promises to myself. One of my favorite pages in my current journal was actually a 2022 goals page. This is where I put all of my goals and my achievements and things that I wanted to do this year, whether it was for work and home, all inside of one page. And it was in the front of my notebook, so I did see it pretty often. So I wanna take this idea with me into 2023. So I'm gonna jot that down to make sure it comes with too. One-on-ones are a collection page that I really love inside of my bullet journals. When I used to have direct reports, when I used to manage a team, they were incredibly important in just keeping track of what was going on with my team members Members, what was happening with them. And as we talked each time, I could reference back to those notes. Now, I do that a lot more with my boss. I'm not managing a team now as much, but I still am meeting with team members one on one every now and again. So these pages are super important. So they definitely have to come along with me this year, too. And the last thing that's coming along with me, regardless of what notebook I move into ever, will be my grid spacing cheat sheet. I have loved having these in my journals. I love creating fun weekly spreads, and it's a great resource. So I'm going to have that. If you're interested in an A5 size one specifically for the bullet journal edition two, I'll put a link for you down in the descriptions below. I have a cool little one that I created that you can use for yourself too as an easily reference, just you know, calling that out. When it comes to leaving things behind, it's a little hard to do that sometimes, but rest assured, if you need to reference anything in the future, but you're not really quite sure, it's better just to leave it behind. You can always grab these notebooks. They can always be there for reference for you, but it doesn't mean you need to front load your entire new notebook or planner with these items. For myself, there are only two things that I wanted to leave behind as I flipped through my journal and really took note of those. The first thing is going to be dedicated project pages. I work a little bit of a different way and I had reoccurring meetings that I had created project pages for, but never really quite use them as efficiently as I wanted to. Instead, I'll take those notes digitally and everyone can share and kind of add to those notes versus me doing them on my own and then transferring later on. Of that same vein, moving things digitally, I have a capacity worksheet that I created for myself for my team. It's a great reference page, but honestly, I just end up writing them down here and then having to transfer them again. I'll be moving these digitally, just doing it all in one shot and I'll be good to go. Other than that, this really encompassed everything that I needed inside of my bullet journal and my planner as I'm going into this next year. So again, if you want, you can go ahead and pause this video now. Go ahead and flip through your bullet journal. Take reference of the things that you want to keep and those things that you don't want to keep. And then we'll come back and we'll talk about how to take all of these ideas together and then set ourselves up for the new year. Okay, we've worked through everything together. We've talked about what we wanted, what we needed, and what we knew we absolutely don't want out of our next notebook. We've gone ahead and reviewed through our current planner or bullet journal, and we've made note of the things that we wanna take with us, notes, collection pages, whatever that might be. And we've also talked about the things that are not coming along with us. These could be old pages, maybe old one-on-ones, or people that you don't work with anymore, old projects that just you know can keep inside of a reference here, but they don't need to make it into the new one. Now that we've done that, let's put all these things together and let's really go ahead and work through what that looks like in setting up your new journal or your new planner. 
For myself, I was able to take all of my wants and my needs and my don't wants, and I put together a plan that's gonna take me into 2023, and I'm feeling really good about it. I have my bullet journal, which I'm still gonna keep. I think the bullet journal method is amazing productivity, mindfulness, it kind of encompasses all the things that I love just in my own personal life that help keep me on track. So I know that I have to keep that bullet journal with me, a lot of collection pages, the room for notes that I talked about that were important. This checks off all of those pieces for me. But what it didn't check off for me was a little bit more of that at a glance, plan ahead. Because the bullet journal focuses a little bit more on the day to day, week to week, it does focus in month to month, but a little bit more in that future log area, I needed something different. So this year, I'm actually including a 2023 task planner with me that I think is going to help me out a lot. Balancing both of these is going to be a little bit new for me, so I'm going to have to figure it out and we'll certainly be working through it. But I see a lot of work tasks, work specific items going to be inside of that task planner, collection, notes, and home things being inside of my bullet journal. So taking those wants and those needs and partnering them together is where I landed for myself. So think about it for yourself. You might want to do a little bit of research and really think about what might be the best way for me to go here? Do I need a completely blank notebook where I can set up a bullet journal for myself? Do I need a dated planner? Is that going to get me through the year? Or maybe an undated planner could be something that you're looking at. It doesn't hold you down as much, but kind of removes the need for you to create your own spreads. It could be an idea for you and something for you to look at. Once you have all of those things, now it's time to set up that new notebook. So let me go ahead and show you real quick how I set up my bullet journal. If you're interested in seeing the longer version of this, I have my entire 2023 plan with me video up. I'll go ahead and put that in the descriptions for you below. But let's go ahead and take a look how I took those keeps and those don't needs and move them into my new bullet journal. As I mentioned before, I'm using the A5 size edition to official bullet journal from bulletjournal.com. If you're interested in this notebook, I actually have a discount code that you can use, men who bullet 10 to get 10% off of your purchases of this notebook. In the back of my notebook, I set up a little bit of that cheat sheet area for me. This is actually where I put that printable that I mentioned before, right here in the back so that way I can see all of the different grid spacing that I need to create my weekly spreads inside of my bullet journal. I love doing it, it's super fun for me, it's a way to get out some of my creative energy, so I wanted to have an easy sneak peek for myself there. What I love about this notebook is that your intention pages, your index, your future log, all of those are already built into this notebook. So you don't have to create brand new pages for them. You just have to kind of start filling them in themselves. So for that future log area, you can see that I set up some stamps and some of that look ahead for me. I think this will work out well for me, especially with me just being intentional about thinking a little bit in the future and jotting those things down. I also brought that 2023 goal page that I mentioned about in my previous one over here. So as I'm setting up those new goals for the new year, I can jot them down and they're right here in the front of my notebook. I also have my help desk section here that I mentioned. This is just an area for me to jot down notes and incident numbers and things like that to reference as I'm working with help desk with onboarding or just getting new equipment for my entire team. My Instagram and my YouTube trackers came in here as well. So as I continue to track through what I'm doing in 2023, I have those on here and I really enjoy doing these for myself. Then I have my lunch and learn page over here, having some fun with stamps over here and a little bit of creative play, but overall space for notes, schedules, we're planning out the new year and getting things together as well. And the last part of my notebook here is just going to be for one-on-ones and setting those up with specific team members. Along with the addition to bullet journal notebook, I'm also going to be using a yearly task planner from Appointed. This is going to cover that want section where I talked about focusing more on work. Inside of this is a completely dated planner, so everything in here is already kind of tracked along for me. I don't have to create new pages as I'm going through, which I think will save me a lot of time and a lot of focus at work specifically. I'll have that monthly overview page. Again, something that I wanted to make sure that I had inside of my new journal, something that I liked in those previous journals, but needed a little bit of a different format for myself. While this notebook doesn't have a ton of space for notes, that's okay. That's why I have my bullet journal. It does really focus on that weekly overview, those priorities and tasks for work. And I think it's gonna really help me focus on work, which is something I really wanna be intentional about this year and really lock down because it's both important for me and also for my career. And I have some very specific goals that I'm trying to achieve this year. I hope that working through this progress has been helpful for you, or if it's something that you're choosing to do after this video, totally cool. It's all about how you wanna handle it. Just make sure you're taking things on one at a time. You don't have to do it all in the same breath. Think about your wants, take a break. Think about your needs, 
focus on what you don't want, and then go ahead and have some fun and go through your bullet journal or planner and just go down memory lane. I love this collection. This was super fun. I want to do this again. The keep in the leaf section is actually really fun and just a great way to process what has happened within a year or a certain set amount of time. If you're interested in any of the notebooks or the planners that you saw in today's video, I'll have all of that down for you in the descriptions below. If you're interested in checking out my 2023 setup, you can check that video out right here. It'd be very cool to have you hang out and check that out as well. Get some ideas and some inspiration for your yourself as you're setting up that new planner or journal for the new year. I'll talk with you very soon. Happy planning.